China is one of the largest, most prosperous economies in the world. China's economy has grown at a rapid pace in previous decades, becoming one of the largest economies in the world. With a nominal GDP of $15.6 trillion, China is the second largest economy in the world, but the largest economy when measured by purchasing power parity. China's financial sector is huge, with cities like Shanghai, Beijing, and Shenzhen serving as some of the largest financial centers in the world. China's stock exchange has a market capitalization of over $10 trillion. China has the largest banking sector in the world, with over $45 trillion worth of assets combined. China is home to a plethora of foreign investment, with foreign investors having bought nearly half a trillion dollars worth of Chinese stocks in 2020 alone, and foreign ownership of Chinese stocks having reached nearly $3 trillion total. China is also the largest creditor nation in the world, owning about $7.8 trillion in foreign investment. China ranks first in the total amount of billionaires in the world and second in the most amount of millionaires. China has become the world's largest manufacturer with various multinational corporations having manufacturing operations in China. China plays a big role in trade, being the largest exporter of goods and second largest importer of goods. China is home to many natural resources, having an estimated $23 trillion of natural resources, much of which is coal and rare earth materials. Clearly, China is a huge economy and is still growing at a rapid pace with one of the fastest growing consumer markets in the world as a result of China's growing middle class. But just how did China, which faced a plethora of economic and political turmoil, and was home to one of the worst famines in human history during the 20th century, manage to transform itself to become one of the largest economies the world has ever seen? In this video, I will be analyzing China's economy, tracing it from its origins to the modern day, in order to analyze the rise of the Chinese economy. The year was 1945. World War II had just concluded and China had endured a long and brutal conflict with Japan. As a result of the war, China's infrastructure had been badly damaged. On top of this, China's economy was in ruins as inflation ravaged the nation. The government made numerous reforms to try and get inflation under control. However, the nation faced another huge problem after World War II, aside from just inflation. The Chinese Civil War between the Nationalists and the Communists commenced once World War II concluded. In 1949, the Communist Party was successful at winning the war and forced the Nationalists to retreat outside the country. In the 50s, under the leadership of Mao Zedong, China was heavily influenced by the Soviet Union and how it structured its economy and leadership. China developed various five-year economic plans focusing on growing and developing its economy via capital-intensive labor, focusing on producing steel, iron, coal, and cement. The Soviet Union helped aid and develop the Chinese economy in its first economic plan. China's economy fared relatively well during its first economic plan. However, by the late 1950s, Mao Zedong grew dissatisfied with the economic model of the Soviet Union as he did not think it worked well in China. In China's second five-year plan starting in 1958, focus was taken away from estate planning and directed towards the population to make heroic efforts in modernizing China's economy. This was the start of the period known as the Great Leap Forward. One of the main issues though at this time was the lack of capital investment to invest in both farming and industrial endeavors at the same time. To overcome this problem, people's communes were created where thousands of workers lived and worked in rural China attempting to modernize both agriculture and industrial output simultaneously. This became known as the Great Leap Forward because the goal was to create a massive leap in productivity by relying on massive efforts by the workers. However, this system was not reliable. Despite a successful first year, the Great Leap Forward resulted in a massive failure as a result of mismanagement of resources by the government and bad weather conditions. Agriculture output had declined and a famine had ensued, one of the worst in history. From the years of 1958 to 1961, more than 14 million people died as a result of starvation. On top of that, economic productivity dropped and China's economy was on the brink of collapse. Not only was China's economy hurting, but its political system had become very unstable as well. The Cultural Revolution had ensued following the Great Leap Forward. This period was a period of immense political instability. Mao Zedong passed away in 1976. This marked the end of the Cultural Revolution and it signaled a new era in Chinese history. The first half of China's history in the 20th century was tumultuous, to say the least. 
Japanese occupation during World War II, a civil war, the worst famine in history, and the rule of one of the most brutal dictators in history made China a very chaotic, impoverished, and dangerous place to be alive. During Mao's death in 1976, the country was on the brink of collapse. You may be asking yourself, how did China turn itself into what it is today? Well, after Mao's death in 1976, the Chinese government purged its radicals and more moderate leaders stepped into power. They focused more on growing the economy and opening the country up to the world. One man, more than any other, was responsible for the modernization of China. This was Deng Xiaoping. Deng Xiaoping was most responsible for liberalizing China's political and economic structure and for opening up the country to the rest of the world. One of the major economic reforms made was disbanding commune farms and allowing farmers to sell their products locally. On a national level, China began to accept foreign investment as well as starting to participate in foreign trade. China became a major global exporter of products as many multinational corporations began to set up manufacturing operations in China to take advantage of the cheaper labor of this newly highly industrializing nation. Chinese cities grew as many people migrated to the cities looking for higher wages. In 1990, China opened up the Shanghai Stock Exchange. Starting in the 90s, China's GDP had grown at rates of 5% or above per year and almost overnight transformed itself into a global superpower. Today, China maintains its position as one of the largest and fastest developing countries in the world. China has one of the largest services sector in the world, accounting for roughly 53% of its economy. China maintains a strong labor market, with half of Chinese citizens being employed in the agriculture, manufacturing, and construction industries. China is the world's largest automobile manufacturer and largest manufacturer of electric vehicles as well. Part of what has made China so successful is its large-scale investments in infrastructure. The country possesses a highly developed telecommunications network. China is the second largest user of the internet after the United States. Having widespread internet access has helped China's economy become more efficient and advanced. Although China is the world's largest carbon emitter, China has invested tens of billions in renewable energy sources, mainly solar energy, which has helped significantly to help drive down the price of solar energy and make it a more feasible alternative to fossil fuels. Perhaps China's most aggressive infrastructure investment plan is its Belt and Road Initiative. This plan is China's multi-trillion dollar investment plan to invest in infrastructure projects in other countries, ranging from Asia all the way to Eastern Europe. The plan consists of building roads, bridges, airports, pipelines, and other infrastructure projects in these countries, with the goal of being China will become more of a centralized force in global politics, and to expand Chinese trade and the usage of their currency. There is much speculation and disagreement on the motives of this plan, but without a doubt this is one of the most aggressive infrastructure investment plans in history. Clearly, China knows the importance of infrastructure especially in developing countries, and are using this as a tool to increase their presence in the geopolitical world stage. Despite many misconceptions, China is not a socialist nation. Although the government maintains strict oversight over the economy, modern-day China is still a strong market-oriented economy. China has come a long way in opening up and liberalizing its markets. Despite a lot of success over previous decades, China still faces many issues, such as a rapidly aging population, growing debt, and a slowing economic growth. More recently, one of China's largest real estate firms was close to defaulting on paying its debt, sending shockwaves throughout the global economy. China certainly faces its fair share of challenges in the near future. It is easier to grow as a nation when you are initially industrializing, but it's harder to maintain that position of a global superpower once you achieve it, as a new set of problems then emerge. Despite this, China has had a lot of success over previous decades, and hundreds of millions of people have been lifted out of poverty seemingly overnight. To sum it up, China is a unique tale. Its overnight success still baffles economists to this day. China went from a war-torn, impoverished nation on the brink of collapse to one of the largest economies in the world, in less than half a century. Despite what you may think about China's political system, China's economy and recent success should be one to be studied for time to come. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing if you want to see more of this type of content in the future. Let me know in the comment section what other topics you want me to cover in future videos. Thank you and have a great day.